one of the elements clinicians are discussing is the cytokine storms where patients are being overwhelmed by inflammation. Did you witness this and how did you treat patients with it? Correct. So cytokine release syndrome um, is basically when the immune system is hyperactive um, in fighting an organism. Uh, it's not something that is unique to COVID-19. Cytokine release syndrome has been observed in many other infection, infectious processes as well and non-infectious processes as well. Um, what it basically means um, in, the, in this particular case, um, it is an, a response of innate immunity in the setting of T-cell lymphodepletion where there is hyperactivation of the immune system releasing to release of multiple cytokines and chemokines, which, relates, which leads to a very hyperinflammatory state. And um, the inflammation also feeds into the prothrombotic state. And it's, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle where hyperinflammation leads to prothrombotic milieu and prothrombotic milieu leads to hyperinflammation. And that just snowballs into what we call the cytokine release syndrome. Um, the markers of that are what I was mentioning before. So the, the COVID lab panel that I mentioned before, all of these markers, interleukin-6, D-dimer, fibrinogen, lactate, ESR, D -di um, I already said D-dimer, uh, CRP, all of those um, give us a sense of how, what is the level, it quantifies essentially the level of um, inflammatory storm going on in the body. Um, and what we essentially observed was that when all of these lab markers are highly elevated, we were seeing even more multiple organ involvement and very critically ill patients in the ICU. So these are all these patients who had clotting in multiple beds, were having strokes, heart attacks, uh, pulmonary embolism, when there's a clot that goes to the lungs. Okay. And uh, obviously you were seeing very sick patients and being on the front lines of a New York City ICU, what are some of the lasting impressions that stick with you about first seeing severely sick patients? Yeah, wow. Um, I feel like I don't think I can go back to that time again. It was a really unique time um, in my career. Basically, um, I would say moving aside from the clinical aspect, the social aspect was what uh, moved me the most and I would never wanna go back to that is where we had to institute policies where family members cannot be at the bedside um, to reduce exposure. And these patients were so ill um, and alone. They would not see their family for weeks at a time. Um, what was very unique about this disease is that patients stay intubated, requiring mechanical ventilation for two to three weeks on average. So it's very different from most other serious illnesses uh, that we see in the ICU. And particularly because of the pandemic setting, they were alone in there, not being able to meet their family members. Um, sometimes I was asking for consent to intubate family members from the same person. Like I remember having a conversation with a son uh, who had to give me consent that we can go ahead and uh, intubate both the father and the mother. Um, I think those moments would be seared in my memory uh, for a very long time. On the clinical aspect, um, what was very unique here is uh, what prompted me to do the study and write this review up, um, which was just the overwhelming nature of uh, multiple organ involvement and um, the very high proportion of acute kidney injury requiring dialysis, um, very frequent um, strokes, and very large territory involved in the strokes, heart attacks, pulmonary embolism. Uh, all of that, I think, was very, I mean, you see that in sick patients, but so much of that in such a concentrated way and high proportions is very different. Uh, absolutely. And then just lastly, doctor, several months into the pandemic, do you feel clinicians have developed a standard of care and have a better understanding of how to treat the virus than back in the spring? So I think I would first say uh, that we, we should be very humble about this disease because there's just so much that we do not know. But there are many ways in which we have learned over the last few months and are doing differently now based on the experience gathered in the last few months and have better treatment protocols. Some examples that I can quote. Um, so in the beginning, the, the, the 
thought was that early intubation is helpful, but um, but as we experienced it, we realized that once we do end up intubating patients, it's very hard for them to not depend on the uh, breathing tube. So we, over time, started to wait till a certain point before we would, so we wouldn't empirically intubate. Second was in the beginning when we were intubating, we would give very high pressure, something that we call PEEP, post expiratory, um, post, post end expiratory pressure. Um, but we realized that that was causing a lot of pneumothorax and we started to not do that um, and not give very high PEEP pressure. Um, a few other things, initially we would reserve steroids only as a last ditch effort. But now after the recovery trial from the UK, um, now it's almost a standard um, of practice to give steroids when patients are hospitalized with COVID-19. Um, some other things in the beginning where people are holding ACE and ARBs, uh, now we know that they don't harm these patients, may even benefit them if we continue them. So there are a lot of similar practice patterns um, that we have developed, which I think are helping us take better care for these patients. Um, but there's just so much that we don't know. I, I don't think um, we're anywhere close to feeling like we've got this. Yeah, absolutely. Well stated. I, I think that, um, you know, as we, we report on COVID-19 and have been doing so for several months now, we find there's still so much that is undetermined and so much uh, more to know about how we should be treating this virus and, you know, even just the way it behaves. So, Doctor, I want to take uh, this moment to thank you very much for taking the time today to discuss this important research. Of course. Thank you so much for this opportunity.